Here's a nice clump made from a mattress from a reputable one like this. Or almost mattress. Partially a mattress. <laughs> What's the history of this tree? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it last night and liked it. <laughs> you mean you got permission to I buy it? <coughs> financial control. <laughs> uh, when Stephen decided to buy this tree yesterday, the only thing that concerned me was um, that I knew the tree wasn't weighed in the pot. Um, which really puzzles me. Um, you can see it not lying in the pot. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I can honestly uh, claim that it's nothing to do with me, the fact that the tree's not wired in the pot. I fairly recently, well, not that recently, but I certainly I bought this tree back from one of the Willowbog regulars that had purchased it and then decided, actually, it's not so much that he decided he didn't like the tree, he decided that actually he didn't like deciduous trees full stop. Right. Because he had actually purchased this tree and the root of a rock tried in the south side. And owned them for, I can't remember. Yeah, 10 months. 15 months, yeah. Mm. Probably that's on the outside, 15 months. So I, I, I bought the trees back off him. And uh, I think in the short time he had owned this tree, he had repotted it into a different pot. He had repotted it into a, a, into a handmade pot, possibly that he'd had made uh, especially for it. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure. And when I bought it back off him, it was in this pot, which is, I think, the tree, the pot that, despite the fact you and your wife obviously hate the pot, is actually a pot that I chose to put the tree in in the first place. He hate this the wrong way. Uh, it's not actually not valid. Oh, and the light of day. It has, in fact, a fairly decent uh, Japanese uh, ceramic. Uh, um, it has. It, 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 I'm not sure why the previous owner had not wired it in, because he it's not as if he's not experienced in bonsai. In fact, he has arguably the second best collection of bonsai anywhere in the northern region. So it's not as if he didn't know. I, I can only assume he either didn't bother or he didn't think it was necessary. But I think you know, when I spoke <coughs> to Stephen last night, I was just concerned that we we actually got the tree properly secured in the pot. It actually has been holding quite a lot of moisture, which is another good reason to have a look where, uh, whether the, there's a little bit too much fine acadama in here. But anyway, so the plan today really is um, <coughs> we'll actually get it out of the pot clean off most if not all but we don't need to bare root this tree we, you know this is a really old Japanese bonsai the one thing we're pretty much damn certain is that we will find a near perfect root system on the on the you see it's got a good nabari <coughs> a good uh, <coughs> trunk, trunk base to the clump good nabari we can actually reveal a little bit more of the nabari I'm sure uh, you know Moss looks really nice on bonsai, and I like it. I like to see it growing. And as I'm sure you all know, if we exhibit it in a show and we don't have natural moss growing, we plant it to make the tree look especially nice for the show. Where where you have trees, like a lot of deciduous trees, and, and in particular maples, where the nabari is such an important part of the image of the tree. It is a balance between allowing some moss to grow that looks nice, but not allowing the moss to end up concealing the nabari completely, and it will do if you just let the moss go on growing green. I actually don't think that, uh, I, I'm actually convinced that there's no ill effects from the moss growing, growing all over the tree. Uh, it's a question of whether you like it. When you think back to that program we watched on the telly the other night, of a woodland in Scotland where the trees were completely covered in lichen and moss mm. and there was no suggestion that, 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 that it was harmful in any way to the trees it's just what happened in that very damp humid atmosphere of the west coast of Scotland um, um, the, the one proviso about that you know moss growing on the trunks of trees is that uh, 
if if one of the main characteristics that give value to your bonsai, I don't necessarily mean commercial value, but I mean value in terms of the quality of the image. And bearing in mind that the, the mo second most important thing that we try to do with bonsai, the first, the first most important thing being to, to make miniature trees, the second most important thing is that we want to make miniature trees that look really old. So for trees, particularly like pines, where one of the main characteristics that lend the illusion of age, if it is an illusion, uh, to the tree is the quality of the bark, the cragginess of the bark. Um, and there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that if you allow moss to grow on a tree like that, then inevitably the moss begins to dislodge the flaky bark. So that's an instance where I certainly wouldn't necessarily think it was a good idea to allow moss to grow on the trunk. When you've got smooth bark trees like this, um, then uh, it's much less of a concern if you have moss growing, but it may still not necessarily add to the image to, to see moss actually on the trunks itself. Um, so, it, as I say, uh, it, with a lot, like a lot of things in bonsai, having moss growing, it, it's a balance. It's a balance between enough for it look look nice, but not so much that it begins to actually be detrimental to the image of the tree. Um, I mean, I I have uh, we, we were talking at school yesterday a bit about western hemlock and the two western hemlock oldest trees in my collection seem very prone to growing moss all over the place and actually that's very typical of what you see with with the sorts of forests in the west coast of america where where hemlock grows quite naturally when you look at pictures of thousand year old uh, hemlock trees in a, uh, admittedly in a, in a mixture of um of, of other conifers, they're not usually in a in a completely uh, uh, a single species forest. The trees then become festooned with moss, um, and there's a. I, I've had a lot of people look at my hemlocks and say, "Well, I'm surprised you let moss grow on them like that." But again, hemlock is a is a relatively smooth smooth bark tree. It's not a tree where uh, flaky bark is um, is necessarily a big feature of uh, giving the illusion of age to the tree. So um, I think it becomes, in the end, in that particular instance, it becomes entirely a, a matter of personal choice, whether you like the look of it or whether you don't like the look of it. So not not a not, not a terribly arduous day's work for you today, but still actually quite enjoyable, I think. Uh, I've I struggled quite years, uh, Willabog to um, to convince people that they should see this whole the whole exercise of repotting to be one of the fun parts of bonsai, rather than as they generally see it as a bit of a chore that we should get out of the way as quickly as possible. Um, because um, <coughs> you know the whole business of of working on the roots, um, doing what you can to improve the navari doing what you can to, to, to improve the efficiency of the root system for the tree, it's not only interesting, of course, it's absolutely vital to what you end up being able to do here. It, it can hardly be stressed enough that the, 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 the strength of the correlation between the physical nature of your root system and the physical nature of the branch structure that you're able to create with that root system. A very simple, very basic structure to structure to your root system means that the chances are you're going to struggle to do anything other than create a fairly simple, basic branch structure. The more complex your root system begins to become, the more complex you can make your branch structure. And this complexity, you know, the fact that, you know, on the tops of these trunks, we have a complex branch structure full of good secondary branching and good ramification. 
is a is a huge huge part of the image of this tree you know if this tree had great old looking trunks like it does but actually half the branches I doubt very much whether Stephen would want to buy it I mean he might well do on the basis that he could over the next few years build upon what he was starting with but it but it's, it, it is part of that mature image that we're trying to go for all the time. Um, and that idea of complexity of branches is something that's quite, quite good to keep in your mind. Morning. Morning, John. Morning. With all our trees. Uh, and one, of the, one of the mistakes I think I see people make is to be forever, forever thinning out their trees too much. I know, you know, we looked at the work we did on, on Geraldine's maple there, where we cut a lot of branches away last year, but that's because we were at a stage with that tree where we were still trying to create um, a, a good arrangement of the secondary branching. Um, when you've done that, and you've got good fine twiggery, you've got good, good ramification, you are not continually going in and thinning it out because if you do that, you just continually make the image look young. You have to you have to see the mature image of a bonsai like a mature image of a tree in the landscape as being pretty much it's dense. I'm not saying it has to be completely dense so you can't see through it at all, but you need you need density to to create the illusion that the tree is actually quite old. So. Nothing to do with repotting, huh? <coughs> Okay. No problem. Yeah.